Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Stephen St. Bridges Hermitage, and this is Moments with the Master. Today is the fourth day of October 2022, and our readings today come from the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verses 13 through 24, Psalms 139, verses 1 through 15, and also the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Folks, I give you those passages every day, not just out of habit, but I want you to know what this, those passages are for the day. I want you to read them for yourself. You can't be strong in the Lord if you're not strong in your prayer life and equally as strong in your, in your scriptural readings. I keep telling you, and I'm going to keep telling you, you need to be strong for the day of trouble. You can't do that if the last minute you're scrambling, uh, trying to figure out how to pray and how to, you know what you should read. If you're new to this, and I t- I've told you before, find a lectionary. I don't care if it's the, the Roman Catholic, the Celtic, the, the Anglican, the uh, Lutheran. Find the lectionaries. A, B, and C years. You know they're going to give you a, a simple, easy reading guide. You, whether you go to mass or you don't. All right, enough of that. You know, I hope you had a great week, and I hope it's going to be a great week for you. Hope you all are blessed. Everything here at St. Bridges is going well. We're, we had uh, some some change of weather, so that's things are good. Thank God. Well, today, folks, today is the memorial of St. Francis of Sisi. You know, we all know the patron saint of all things in nature. So today, it's not going to be too much of a serious uh, reflection, but I want to have a little fun with the scriptures today. Uh, see if I can get a point across at the same time. You know, we as humans can learn a lot from from about God in, in nature. You know, we we see the glory of His creation. We see the glory of God. And in scripture, we see that plants and animals are often mentioned and often used as, as allegories and metaphors to impart a, a an important scriptural, uh, spiritual lesson to each one of us. And it, I, w- I don't want us to lose sight about that because sometimes we read those passages and we just gloss over them. And they're important, but like everything else in the scriptures. Well, let's start off with the eagle. The eagles, we find, it teaches us scriptural lessons about being majestic, faithful, strong, courageous. You know, we see in nature that eagles rise up above the storms. And I think that's what God's trying to teach us here when he uses the eagle. You know, that we, we should rise above our challenges, our trials, our, our, our concerns. Not just the big ones, but also the small ones. You know, the everyday ones. Um, the confrontations, the arguments. You know, the people on the freeway. God, you know, we see them every day. We should rise up like eagles, rise above the pettiness and the jealousies. Uh, You know, we're called to be overcomers. Uh, Also, in in nature, we find that the eagle, they tend to feed on on fresh kills, fresh meat. And I think that tells us as as, as Christians that we should daily feed upon the Word of God. Again, building ourselves up for the day of trouble. I think that also keeps us fresh. and keep, You can't be the best version of yourself if you're not in your, in your scripture reading daily. Isaiah 40, 31 reads, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strengths. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, there's my point in, in reading, reading the daily scriptures. Then we find in scriptures that, that other than people, trees are mentioned more than any other part of creation. You know, we find this, the tree in the first book of Genesis. We find the tree in the last book of Revelations. If we read Psalms, we open the first Psalms, Psalms 1-3, we read, They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit 
in its seasons, their leaves do not wither, and all that they do, they will prosper. It's talking about us, talking about the faithful. Be faithful, guys. Be faithful in your reading. Be faithful in your prayers. Ants. Scripture talks about ants, and it's, it, it's always positive. I know we don't like ants. You know, they, they get into the house, and we just they cause havoc. You know, but from Scripture, those tiny little creatures we find are smart. They work hard. They prepare for the future. And here I believe God wants us to learn the value of hard work, of foresight, teamwork. Uh, in the in the bigger sense, you know, we see the eternal. You know, we, we're working together to build a, the, 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 the kingdom of God. Proverbs 6.6 6 reads, Go to the animal slugger, observe her way, and be wise. You know, I know they're a pain, but they're trying to teach us a lesson in Scripture. Now for the ox. The ox. Strong, powerful, slow to move. You know, we find it in Scripture, you know, for, you know, for plowing, for hauling, for threshing the grain, uh, for transporting goods here and there. You know, but if we look at it, they're working. They're doing the work of their master. You know, usually we find oxen don't, aren't easily disturbed. They're patient. They're dependable. You know, those are the characteristics that we as Christians should have. Building the kingdom of God. Let's be patient. Let's be dependable. You know, and whatever our master wants us to do, let's do it. Let's work hard for the glory of God. Proverbs 14, 4 reads, Where there are no oxen, there is no grain. Abundant crops come by the strength of the oxen. Okay, think about this, folks. You know, we have bishops and priests and ministers and, you know, whatever you happen to call your leaders. And then we have the laity, the everyday folks. Those are the people who are really going to build the kingdom of God. Your leaders can be only at one place at one time. But, but the parishioners, they do the, the, the heavy lifting. They're the important ones in the big scheme of things. Never lose sight how important you are to, to building the kingdom of God. You know, each and every one of you. you know, never think that you're less than you are. You know, you're God's personal friend. How, much, how, how, how great is that? we move on to the deer. Beautiful, graceful, more importantly, sure-footed. You know, these are the, you know, we see these qualities in the spiritual. You know, we see that sure-footedness is, is in the foundation of God and God's word. And if we use that in our lives, we won't be moved. We won't stumble. But we're always going to have, you know, our feet firmly planted. Uh, we can be confident and walk gracefully through through our journey of life. You know, we can gracefully leap over the obstacles. You know, Psalms 18, 32 through 33. It reads, He makes my feet as steady as the deer. Even on mountains, He keeps me from falling. The God who girds me with strength and made my way safe. He made my feet like the deer, feet of a deer. And set me in secure heights. Firm foundation, folks. Firm foundation in God's word. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, we find some animals that are symbols and metaphors for, for maybe the more spiritual. We know the lamb. With all its innocent impurity. And we know he's a pure prototype for that pure and, and, and spotless sacrifice, our Lord Jesus Christ. God the Father demanded an unblemished lamb as a sacrifice. And when we find the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world, in our Lord and Savior. But you know, the Lamb also signifies and 
his followers. You know, in Sirach 13, 17, we read, what does a wolf have in common with a lamb? No more has a sinner with the devout. Think about that. Apply it to your lives. That's really important, folks. Let me read that one again. What does a wolf have in common with a lamb? No more than a sinner with the devout. And we read in John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Isn't that wonderful? We hear his voice. We know him. He knows us. Now we move on to the lion, you know, which is, we obviously know is one of the Lord's titles, you know, it's Revelations 5.5, 5, Lion of Judah. And the lion denotes the strength, the power majestic of the King of Kings. Think of who we follow, the King of Kings. You know, I know a lot of you follow sports. I enjoy sports too. And we follow our teams and we know the stats. We know what, you know, who threw what and how many touchdowns, how many strikeouts, you know, how many goals. How much more important it is to know what the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, has written down, had his had written down for us. You know, if we want to be strong and powerful, we want to be fearless and bold, confident, you know, like the like like the lion. We have to stay in the word. You know, we, we see that Jesus is both the lion and the lamb. It's it's an interesting paradox, but it shows a perfect balance of who he is between his power and authority and his and his love and his sacrifice. The conquering king and yet the the the, the sacrifice of love, kindness, compassion. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful metaphor. And lastly, the dove. We often see as the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Peace, love, and messenger of God. You know, birds, the doves are often seen as loyal, dedicated, they're peaceful, they're beautiful animals. Jesus struck us to be innocent and harmless like the dove. But of course, let's be, you know, let's couple that with the wisdom. We've got to be wise. We can't just just follow blindly through life. You know, Matthew 10, 16, we read, Behold, I send you out as sheep. In the midst of wolves, be as wise as serpents, innocent as doves. Folks, God's creation can teach us a lot of things. Today's the Memorial Day of St. Francis. Go out there. Take a little time, get out of your offices, your houses, your classrooms, wherever you happen to be, get out of the car. Look at creation. Look at the glory of God. Well, those have been my reflections. Hope you found them useful, maybe amusing. Uh, may the Lord richly bless and keep you. May the Lord bless and keep you and hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again.